Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are using paint sample cards, also known as color swatch cards or paint chip samples to create stunning paper craft projects. I will be sharing 16 specific ideas. So there's something here for everyone. All right, let's begin. Just a side note, you can get these cards for free from hardware stores, but I strongly advise against going overboard and taking them without permission. We will chat more about this a little bit later. All right. Idea number one is mini journals or notepads. I have three examples here to show you. There are 101 million ways probably of making a little booklet or a notepad, but for this one here, I just used the sample card on as my front cover and I do have a Zuta binder, but if you don't have one, there's other ways of doing it, such as this, for example. So again, I have just made a little notepad here and I used one of the sample cards just as a front cover here, cut it down, embellished a little bit and everything is held together with this little bit of twine up the top so you don't have to have any special machinery and this one here is actually all paint sample cards that i have also covered on the back so as you know the cards that we get they have you know all the brand stuff on the back and in most cases, i like to cover that okay and the way that this one is held together is just by using two eyelets they close at the back of course and that's a little booklet. And I really wanted to start off with this idea because this is what my channel is mostly about. And as I said before, there's 101 million ways of making a booklet. And here's just another very simple idea. You fold it in half. I'll use a little bit of washi tape here on the spine. We're just doing something real simple, real quick. Next, I might use another one of these to cover the inside panels. All right, that's trimmed down. I'm just gonna glue that on. Excellent. Next, I took some pages from this paper pad and I have cut them down to fit perfectly inside my little book, just like that. And because we're keeping it simple, instead of using needle and thread to bind my little booklet, I am going to use a little piece of elastic that I have, just wrap it around the middle. I'll wrap it around twice and i'm going to tie a little knot here and then i'm also going to go underneath both of the threads and tie another knot and maybe a bow let's see how it looks instead of the bow i'm actually going to use this as my closure so i'm going to tie another knot on this side maybe we'll add some beads how's that for fun a little cool little closure and now finally I have some little circles that I've cut out and perhaps I can use one of them on this project. It needs a little something extra. And here we go, a quick and easy cute little booklet finished and ready to join its friends. And we are ready to move on to idea number two, which is layering them and making pockets and all sorts of fun stuff. So let's start with this one. Really quite simple, you're using a graduation of color, lightest to darkest, or the other way around, or you can mix and match. Did I mix and match? Not really. I kind of used blues and greens with greens and so on. But there's nothing to say that you can't do something like this. So basically, all this is we're layering. This is uh, these are all pockets, and that's a pocket and that's a pocket. The idea for this is to be bound into a journal and then filled up with all sorts of fun stuff. Did I do something else there? No. Okay, this one here you can see is layered this way. And I did I did stitching around, but I also did some doodling. You can see that with a little bit of pen. And then there we have it. We're just layering and then you can see the cards peeking from underneath. Pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to do, you know, like a demonstration. But let's just say, for example, I'm just using these as an example. You would layer your cards and you would cut yourself a border here and then follow that same kind of a border or not. Really best idea is to start with your shortest piece and I would draw on the back, let's say you can draw yourself a wiggly line, cut it out, pop it on your next card, 
And we have to pretend this is all now cut out. You pop it on your next card. And then let's say this is the next card that's peeking from underneath. You draw yourself another wiggly line. Then you cut that one. And you keep on going. And you get this waterfall kind of effect. And then finally this one here i love using coloring book pages the sunstie dyed in my art journal but you can't really write on them so the best way to utilize those pages is by either applying pockets where you can have little tags all journaling spots or you can cover them you know with something but anyway that's that's not what we're talking about today so here you can see i've layered pockets not in a straight line you can also do a straight line of course and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You're creating pockets where you can put all sorts of fun stuff. And blue and orange go so beautiful together. And I also used the paint sample cards to make all of these cool tags. So everything goes so beautifully. And this one here would look something like this with the tags inside. Moving on to idea number three, which is embellishments. So really just think of them as any piece of paper, a mini canvas that has a beautiful color underneath. All I did here is glued on. These are some 3D embellishments. They glued on. I have some little sentiments, some little stickers, and also use some bling pieces and, you know. And then this, uh, my idea for using this is in journals, of course, because that's my thing. But these are nice to be used on presents. Include these in happy mail use them as pockets just like the previous idea but instead of stacking you can do just one of these and then you know you can pop anything inside a little tag or some extra writing space it will beautify any project that you put it on and cards of course i can do something like this make a little card maybe something like this or just a plain white card. Look at that. That looks absolutely beautiful. I can have some strips of gold, I don't know, washi tape or something like that. Here's a last little example. Oh, this is my favorite. This is a definite winner. And I think I'm going to leave that one like that so that I can glue it on straight away. And look at that. How stunningly beautiful is that? And now that we're on the topic of cards, let's move on to the next idea which is idea number four. And we're using paint sample cards to make patterns and to make cards, or oh, really it can go on anything, it doesn't have to be cards. I got really Pinterest happy here. And these are the two that I really loved. So we can see a birthday cake here, and this is a Christmas card. And there's hundreds of ideas on patterns that you can make. I think for the Christmas trees, it, it looks nice if you have this type of a chip card or paint chip card that has, you know, the three color variations. Some, it really depends on what your, what kind your hardware store has. There's this type with the single, then there's tiny little ones like this. Look at this, the texture, I love it. So anyway, for the Christmas trees, I think this one is good with the variations of color. For the birthday cake, I use this type and I had the, you know, the proper colors, they go in order. By the way, I don't know if I've mentioned, I have a whole list of the things that I'm sharing with you today. So you don't actually have to write anything down. I'm gonna share that on screen a little bit later on. Idea number five is using your punches and doing fun stuff with the punch out shapes. So depending on what kind of punches you have, you can make a whole lot of fun stuff. And this is what I have here, some hearts. I also saw this on Pinterest and the butterflies here, butterflies in flight. And I just drew a little line and, you know, punched out some butterflies. This, yes, they are cards, but I am going to make these into mini little notebooks. Something like this, just a mini little thing, not an actual full blown journal, but you know, a journal companion, let's say. And the idea with these is to use the graduation of color, different shades of the same color, if that makes sense. Anyway, this one's pretty self-explanatory. So let's move on to idea number six, which is paper buttons. Well, let me tell you, these were a whole lot of fun to make and they're so vibrant and colorful and I just love the look of these buttons. And I did use eyelets in the centers, you know, in the holes because I just love how that looks with the eyelets. But if you don't have eyelets, then you can just 
do this. First, I'm gonna make the holes, but I kind of like to mark where I'm gonna make the holes first so that they're somewhat set centered. It does not have to be perfect. Maybe you can do whimsical buttons. Okay, here you go. That's what it looks like without the eyelets. I mean, you can see having the eyelets does make it look better, but if you thread some thread in there, it's gonna accentuate the fact that it's a button maybe something like this but what i wanted to show you to accentuate the holes if you don't have the eyelets or if you don't want to use your eyelets you want to save them you can just use a sharpie and look at that how cool does that look and you can even use a sharpie and go all the way around just to give that edge a nice finish and then if you're wondering what can i do with the buttons I have a full video on making these oversized buttons and this is a different project we're not using paint chips here but i'm just going to show this to you and i'm also going to link the video just to give you ideas on you know if you do make a whole heap of buttons i have little packages like this maybe to sell at a craft fair you can do individual little buttons like this i don't know these are just ideas and more packages if you want to see that video i'm going to link it and this is a card using a, here we were making oversized buttons which these are not but you can do this project that i'm showing you with the paint chip samples why not that's why i'm showing you okay here these are little you know hair clips pretty cool earrings too which i don't have here to show you but i did make some i actually found one one is better than none so here we go little earrings these buttons have four holes i only did these ones with two holes so you can experiment with that kind of thing as well imagine how cool making paint chip earrings and then we have this kind of thing and then we have this kind of thing and then we have this kind of thing and i will link that video if you want to dive deeper but just in case if you're wondering with these ones i didn't do anything on the back i just left them as they are on the back but you can you know double them up double them up and then do the punch the holes and whatever you know if you want to have a double-sided button but i'm planning on sticking these down on projects so i didn't think it was necessary all right next idea because i've just shown you the buttons i'm going to show you this project next which is using the punched out shape negatives i think they're called I don't know the proper name but this is what we're talking about so when i was cutting out these butterflies for that other project this one here and then you're left with the negatives and of course you can incorporate that into your projects in many different ways but i'm going to show you what i did with the button ones so i made a little booklet and this is a pocket booklet i'm calling it a pocket because it's you know these are all pockets and you can see these are the negatives the leftovers from making the buttons they look exactly the same but these are actually used my die cutting machine and just placed my die cuts the way that i want them you know like this and then i'm left over with you know this this is what it looks like you look at this and you think recycling bin or you know let's make something with it so when you pop it on another contrasting color perhaps something like this or goes on anything really and then i was thinking what am i going to make with this i mean you can make a journaling spot you can put acetate in between here make it into a see-through little pocket you know you can put mesh inside there i mean there's lots of things which is what i love about this craft but this is what i decided to do so oh i forgot about the dyes how fun and colorful does that look i love 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 how happy and, and just vibrant this little booklet is. And then I, I ran out of time, but I could go and what do I have here? I have lots of things on my desk and maybe, you know, I could come in and embellish each pocket or not. In all of my projects, I really wanted to get rid of the writing. I didn't like the writing, but that could be part of the character of your little project. So I think, you know, something like this. A little pocket like this on the bottom of the page you can do you see i mean that looks pretty cool too all right so that was idea number seven idea number eight is also here you might have noticed it already and it's using them for tabs 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 i love having tabs in my journal even though 
Are they really useful? Like, do I mark my pages by, I don't know, maybe, maybe I do. Maybe I will in the future. But in this little mini book, the tabs are most definitely purely decorative. And also they are there so that I can share the idea of using tabs or paint swatches as tabs. And you don't have to have any special die cuts like I do. These die cuts were actually sent in Happy Mail, but you don't have to have anything. You don't have to have any special stuff. Just fold it in half. I get rid of this writing, I'd cut that off. And then you can make a little pattern maybe. I don't know, what should we do? As long as you don't cut all the way through the fold. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. I mean, it helps if it is, but it doesn't have to be. This definitely isn't. But you know, there's my little tab. See how it's kept together. Maybe we can shorten it. Maybe you can put a tab on one of these. Ink the edges, put a little sticker there, put a little, what do I have? I have a, a bit of sewing. I have a little bling piece here that I glued down because you know, gold, it's just popping. It's popping, look at that, love that look. So you can, you know, when you look at stuff like this, it really doesn't look that great, but it actually, once you embellish it, you make it pretty, it looks beautiful. All right, let's move on to idea number 10, which is in here and I'm about to show you. I just wanted to go back to the little side note that I made at the beginning of this video when I said that I strongly advise against going overboard and taking these, you know, taking a whole stack without permission. So most of these were given to me over the years by family and friends who know me and my obsession with paper and crafting. And I will admit, when I first started crafting, I went through the collection phase, you know, the collection phase, which many of you will relate to. And that's basically the phase where you do more collecting and amassing stuff and thinking of all of the things that you're gonna make, but that's all you're doing. You're amassing stuff rather than creating. And I actually speak about that in my book. And all that I can say is that now that I'm on the other side of this collection phase with hundreds of videos filmed, over 200,000 subscribers, thank you so very much, and a book that I just mentioned, the advice that I can give you is just to create and make. Don't get stuck in the hoarding and the collecting phase. So if you do go to a hardware store, Trust me, you don't need this many samples. You will only create clutter in your space and clutter in your mind. And that is number one creativity killer. <laughs> All right, moving on. But before I move on, I am going to link this book in the description down below in case if you want to see, I just brought it out because I don't speak about it nearly often enough and maybe I should. All right, what is in here? It is idea number 10, which is washi tape swatches. And these, okay, so these are washi tapes wrapped around, you can really wrap a washi tapes around anything. Generally, it's done on playing cards, but this is also a good surface, the paint chip cards, because it's kind of, it's very sleek. I also did cover the backs because I didn't like that blue, you know, sticking out. So. I do like this look and these are really cool to have in your journals or especially if you're going traveling and you need just a little bit of your washi tape. You don't want to take, you know, the 3D, they're kind of difficult, right, to be taking with you. And you don't have to because you can just take something like this with you. And you know what, this is fun, a fun little thing to put in your happy mails if you're giving something to a friend, you're giving a little gift, you're giving a little stationary pack, let's say, Look, 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 I'm pulling so many things out of my stash. This is a simple little notebook here. This is in that buttons video, I think, I'm not sure. And you know, it's just a simple little notebook, but then you make it special with little details and little additions such as a washi tape sample inside there, you know, as a little fun little thing, especially if it's special washi tape that has gold foiling. It's really pretty and really quite beautiful like this, look at that. Anyway, idea number 11 is tags, and I've mentioned tags before, and you've seen them in the pockets and the booklets, but I wanted to give it a, its own little category. So these are, as you can see, obviously, paint chip cards, and I really enjoyed using these types of cards with the gradients, with the, you know, three different colors, because I love that look, you know, rather than the, just the one 
color okay and then of course I covered all of the backs so then the backs can be used uh, you know look, I do get this question a lot I have to say what do you use tags for so I look at tags as little mini canvases the way that I personally use them in my journals is to write little snippets so it could be a, a little mini gratitude for the uh, for the date or de that particular day or it can be a quote or it can be just a quick note on something that you did that day or that brought you joy or whatever or it can be a little mini canvas like I said so you can do a little mini painting you can okay I have stuff on my desk here so let's say you just have 15 minutes to create and you're in your journal in a page in a pocket that has a tag you can pull the tag out and then you can do something like what have I got these are all the things on my desk so I'm gravitating towards this I don't know maybe pop that on maybe not do a little collage like this nothing special but i'm actually really liking how it turned out i can write a little something here today was a crappy day i don't know i could write the date and it's just a little pretty little thing it's your moment of creation but you're not looking at a full blank page you have a mini little thing and if you have 10 minutes you have look how quickly i just did this and I have to glue it down, put a little center here, ink an edge or two, you know, and done. So that's what tags are for. And also, of course, you can put them on presents, which is, I don't know, is that what tags, is that where the whole tag thing comes from? You, you get lots of tags when you purchase clothing and you put tags on a present, something like this, you put it on to and from, I don't know, that's what tags are. So let's move on. This one here, by the way, before we move on, if I bring it closer, you will see that it's embossed. So embossing, I didn't include that into any of the ideas, but if you do have an embossing machine, it looks quite nice when you emboss, even though because this surface is somewhat plasticky, this is kind of thing that can happen and also depends on your embossing folders. And I tried spraying it with water first, but still, you know, it, it did this. It's kind of chipping off. You can see the white bits, but it's not a bad, it's not entirely a bad thing, is it? And idea number 11 is pouches or floating pockets. And basically it's two paint swatch samples sewn together, but you can glue the edges. And I made little pockets, little wallets, little floating pouches. Uh, floating means that you can move them from one page to the next in your journal and there we have it. This was quite a bit of fun to make. And I used a little heart template, which I just drew myself and cut out from a cereal box. And then, of course, I used paint swatches to cut out the shapes, you can see, and then glue the shape onto a contrasting background. Did a bit of sewing. You don't really need to do actual sewing. You can just use your pen and make some marks. Here's an example here. You can see all of this sewing. You see that sewing? Oh, it's upside down. All right, you see that sewing here? Well, it's just pen and not actual thread. Same here. In fact, in all of the little bits, it's just pen. So you don't have to have a sewing machine, but you do have to have a permanent pen because this is a sleek surface and it will smudge. And you know, since we're using paint sample cards and bright and colorful colors then i would fill these up also with the paint swatches something like this look how, how cute is that a little gift for someone or in your journal stuck to the side of the page like this look at this how beautiful does that look oh i just had another idea let's see if it will work look a little pouch for your special pens they have to be short pens though Idea number 12 is bookmarks, and in this case, it's just one bookmark. That's all I had time for. So let's just focus on the paint chip or the paint card underneath. You can see that there, and it, my, all of my cards are this short. I know sometimes they can be longer, but I don't have any. And so then what I've done is put two together, but then it was too tall. So I just got rid of one section, something like this. So you can see how this is too tall for a bookmark 
and so then I just got rid of the one section and there we go chopped it down so that there's no writing I don't like the writing and glued it down on black cardstock because that contrast it's just beautiful love that we have the black and white twine up the top and of course I just embellished it with whatever was you know whatever I could but still wanted to make it make sense so with love just because and butterfly stickers and done very simple yet effective in any journal on any page look just goes anywhere anywhere you put it it looks absolutely stunning i'm just gonna keep going for now i have a flip through of this particular journal i'm showing right now on my channel so i'm going to link it some way if you want to have a look at this scrumptious beauty idea number 13 is paper quilts so my very last video was all about making paper quilts and we did all sorts of fun stuff such as this and this and this and this and this and it just keeps going okay so i will link that video if you want to dive deeper and have a look at all the fun stuff you can make of this as part of that video as well so i just recreated this here and i used paint chip samples of paint sample cards i think i should decide what i'm going to call them and before i paint um, glue them down i did put them through my embossing folder or my embossing machine so you can see all of the patterns but you can also see some of the crackling so i'm not sure how much i love that look and something like this going back to my little things that i have here you know it's quite easy to make it tell a story for example when i pop these two pieces down it just looks absolutely beautiful so again this this can be like a little card but i am actually going to bind page, pages in and make it another little mini booklet and then this one here i added sewing because i just can't help myself look how beautiful that looks and because we're doing paper quilt so paper quilt uh principles i suppose you know sewing is just part of big part of quilting i simply must sew it's just the way it is you know and this is going to be a journal an actual journal so it's a journal cover all right now here are some extra ideas that i wanted to do but i actually ran out of time so number one i wanted to make a whole bunch of journaling spots in which case i would take if they clear uh, i mean light like this this can also be a writing surface so i would basically glue them together let's say but i like to get rid of the writing i don't know that's just me i like that so that can be a journal spot something like this i would back onto i have a little folder here of the things you know blank pieces blank areas that i can glue stuff onto this is even some cardstock there but mostly it's things like this old calendars look at that september 2007 yes it's an old calendar oh we have 2008 oh and then basically i just tea dyed it so it's not just white and there we have it you glue that on top of that you cut it out just like i did with most of the things i've shown so far you know tags and things like that you can sew around and they are journaling spots journaling spots meaning you can journal on it it's also movable you can move it around your journal and it's also really good for busy pages such as map pages you know coloring book pages let's say you have this in your journal what can you do here you know what can you do here so you could use one of these as a pocket like we did go over we already discussed and then you have your journaling spot which now has blank paper glued onto the other side and then that can be living inside your pocket and that's your little mini canvas you know it doesn't have to be journaling it can be collage another idea which i saw on pinterest and i thought it was a really good idea but i didn't get a chance to do it so instead of wrapping around washi tape let's say you have your paint sample card you know let's take this one as an example you have covered the back in the way that i've just explained get rid of all the writing or not it's up to you and then instead of going ahead making it into a tag or washi tape swatches or whatever 
you can make it into jewelry cards so if you sell jewelry at markets if you make let me show you something i got this literally today it's happy mail sent to me by my wonderful subscriber and this is paper beads look how beautiful they're bracelets and i wouldn't wear them as bracelets and she did say if jewelry is not your thing you can you know you can make them into anything they can be charms and fun stuff on the book spines and look look at that uh, there's even a paper bead that i made right here and it just just looks beautiful so we're talking jewelry cards okay so we have something like this it's a bracelet i was thinking more necklace but let's see if it will work and then you make little slits you can just use your scissors because you will have this backed onto something and let's say you have a necklace i think you can see where i'm going with this but nevertheless i'm committed now and look oh how cool does this look stunning you can have little earrings here let's see this is what i'm talking about op shops and thrift stores look a whole bunch of mismatched but in nevertheless earrings and then you have you know something like that anyway jewelry cards is another idea and another idea is getting creative with circle punches now imagine punching out a whole bunch of circles i have a video and it's also another one of those dive deeper i'm gonna put this up on screen in just a moment dive deeper videos i have a whole video devoted to getting creative with circle punches okay and you don't even have to have any punches so be sure to watch that video i'm not going to go into it now because i don't have enough materials here to work with or colors and you know it's just not gonna it's just not gonna be great but anyway i think in that video i have like 10 ideas on what you can do with circle punches all right another thing that you can do is go on pinterest and go mad with all the ideas <laughs> that you're gonna get all right let's quickly recap we have mini journals and notepads and this impromptu little journal made on camera love it idea number two is layering the paint swatches and creating pockets idea number three is embellishments a whole bunch of embellishments idea number four is patterns and making cards idea number five is punch out shapes idea number six is paper buttons idea number seven is the negatives the punch out shape negatives and idea number eight is tabs idea number nine is washi tape swatches and idea number 10 is tags idea number 11 is pouches and floating pockets idea number 12 is bookmarks and idea number 13 is paper quilts and then we have journaling spots, jewelry cards, and getting creative with circles. Whew, this was a lot of work, let me tell you. And I had this project in mind for the longest time and I've been hoarding these paint sample cards. I'm so glad I finally did it, it's here. And I hope that you got lots of ideas. I hope that you enjoy it and you feel inspired. And I nearly almost forgot. Actually, I'll put it up in a moment. It's very busy, busy here. I'm gonna move this all away. I just wanted to say thank you for watching let me know what you think please in the comments down below and also share all of your ideas that i haven't covered in this video all right i'm going to move all of this away and pop this down on screen in a moment i'm going to leave it there for a little while so you can take notes or take a screenshot so that you don't forget all of the ideas because we often watch videos and we think i'm going to make that and then it goes into oblivion of ideas long forgotten so here it is. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. And by the way, you probably already worked out, but the ones that say dive deeper are the ones that I have full size videos on those specific ideas and everything is going to be linked in the description box down below.